In this video I want to talk about uh, working with Node-RED variables. Now in an earlier video um, we talked about the message object and we saw how it was used to pass information between, between nodes. Uh, the problem with the message object is that each time an event takes place you get a new message object and the old message object gets replaced. So how do we store data uh, in Node-RED? Well, Node-RED provides three mechanisms. One is the context object which stores data for a node so only a single node, the flow object which stores data for the flow which is a collection of nodes and the global object which stores data for the canvas which is a collection of flows and also a collection of nodes. And we're going to look at all three methods. Now the process of retrieving and storing data is to use the get method for retrieving the value and the set method for storing the value. So here we're looking at the context object. So to retrieve data from the context object we use the get method and to store data from the context into the context object we use the set method. And when we look at the flow object and we look at the global object they both have get methods and, and set methods. Now a variable stored for function 1 in the concept context object is not available for function 2 and vice versa and in our first flow we're going to, to demonstrate that. Okay, to illustrate um, the context object and the flow object and the global object I'm going to use a collection of flows and I've already created them here and the simple flows they consist of an inject node which is used to inject a message and we're going to inject the on message and that injects into a function node which modifies the message. Now what I'm going to get the function node to do is actually count the number of times a message has actually been passed into this function. So we're just going to implement a simple message counter throughout this uh, illustration. And then we're going to pass the message on into the debug node and we're going to display it over here so we can see what's happened. Every, remember every time I press this button here it injects a message. It's actually just on into this function. This function modifies or does something with the message passes on to the debug node and we display it over on the, the right hand side. Now what I want to illustrate first is the fact that the context object only stores the data for a function so when I actually create a, uh, a storage counter in function 1 it's not available for, to function 2 and vice versa. So let's have a look at the, the functions. So this is function 1 and first line of it and is common to most of the well so most of all of the function not quite identical but very very similar it says take the variable count and, ass and assign it to the variable count that we've got stored in the context object so we're using the get method to get the variable now if this doesn't exist then we'll assign it the value of zero that's all that's doing then we'll take the count and we'll increment it and then we create a message payload, this is something to print out on the right hand side and we're going to include the count in as part of the payload so we can see the counter and then we're going to store the counter back into the context object and then we're going to return the message which will display it. Now function 2, now it's identical to function 1 except that this time I'm just going to put F2 in there as opposed to F1 so we can actually see which function is actually printing out. And what I want to illustrate with the this first demo is that the data we save in the context, ob context object is only available to a function so the, d the counter here in function 1 is actually a different counter in function 2 even though it's got the same name. So if we just get back to function 2 we can see our counter name is count and we're getting the count from this variable count stored in the context object. So they're using identical variables. So let's deploy it and let's uh, see what happens when I uh, eject a, a message. So press the button and out on this right hand side F1 on message the counter is 1. Press it again the counter is 2. Press it again the counter is 3. Now let's go on to this one here, press the, th the eject node, now function 2, counter is 1, no it's not 4, it's 1, press it again, counter is 2. So you can clearly see here that the counter stored in function 1 is 
different than the counter stored in function 2 even though it's using the same name. Okay that illustrated using a, a single variable and if I just go back to function 1 we can see here we had a, a variable count and we were storing it as a single variable count here. Now we can actually store multiple variables and to do that we just create a second one and we store it in a second variable name as part of the context object there and I've just modified this script here slightly so as, again it's retrieving both variables it's storing both variables further down this time I'm implement sorry I'm incrementing count 2 by 2 rather than by 1 uh, otherwise it's the same so done and let's just click on there to inject and we see count 1 is 1, count 2 is 2, do it again 2 and 4 as we'd expect. Now we can also store an object so this is useful if you want to store lots of uh, variables uh, rather than creating individual variable names we can store it as part of an object and this one does that. The opening is a little bit different we don't set it to zero this time we set it to an empty object so local here is not a variable simple variable it's, a, it's actually an object variable and we test if the the count variable is part or count property is part of the the local variable and it's not if it's not we set it to zero other than that it's very similar to the first script and we're just going to print it out and we're going to store it back in as part of the context object and we're done. So, so to test it we just click here and we get the counter as 1, click it again and it's 2 and again and it's 3 which is what we expect so it works storing data in, in an object as, rather than as a, a single variable. So now let's move on to the flow object and the idea here now is that we're going to share a counter between two nodes and we can share the counter between any node within this this flow which is flow one so very similar to what we've seen before but this time I'm using the flow object here and again I'm using the same opening line here we retrieve the counter if it's there otherwise we set it to zero and then we increment the counter we print it out and then we store the counter back again and the counter is in an object called or a variable called count so that's that done and if we look at the other function this time we're incrementing it by two but we're using the same count or count variable should I say and again we're printing it out and we're storing it back again right let's reset it and let's try it so f5 is one f5 is two now when we click on this one here we see F6 is 4 and if we click on this one here now F5 is 5. So these are clearly using the same F5 is 6. Now if we click this one it's 8. These are clearly using the same counter so the counter is being shared between these two nodes and it will be shared by other nodes within the same flow. Let's reset that again now. So now what happens if we've got several flows? We've got a flow here and we've got a flow here, flow, flow one and flow two. So now I'm going to illustrate sh sharing uh, variables between two flow, different flows. And we've got here a global function. And we can see here that this time we're using the, the global object. We're also using the flow object because I'm going to show you that the, the flow object isn't actually taken across flows whereas the global object is. So we do the same thing, we create a counter in the global one and we use, create a counter in the, the flow one and we store them there and we print both of them out. Now let's just give it a try first, click on here and then we can see the flow is set to 9. Now it's set to 9 because we were just using it here. If I just click on this one again you can see the flow one should and this is flow 6 but if I go back to this one here you can see now it's 12. Because remember the flow object is shared with all the between all the nodes in the flow and this 
count here is part of the same flow. Okay, uh, our global counter is set to zero, and if I show you the function again, you can see that the we don't increment the counter there. What I do is I increment the counter in the, the second flow. So if we go over here now and we look at the function, now the function looks the same as what we had before. We got the flow, we got the global, and this time I increment the global count, I also increment the flow. Okay, so remember a flow count was 12 and a global count was zero. So let's click on that and you see our flow count is one and our global count is five. Now our flow count is one because it's a, a different flow. It's flow two and not flow one and the flow object isn't carried across the flows. And if we go back to flow one now, remember the global is set to five. If we click this one again, we can see this time it's five. And the flow object here is 13, it is not one. And let's go back to flow two again and we do it again and this time we have global 10 and flow 2 and go back to flow 1 and click it again and this time we we got global 10 and flow 14 so you can see there the global counter is carried across flows whereas the flow counter isn't carried across flows it's only it's restricted to the nodes within the flow that's the context object the flow object and the global object being used to store variables within uh, node red now that brings us to the end of the video if you've got a comment then you can leave them below if you like the video then you can use the like button below and if you'd like to be notified when i publish more videos you can always subscribe to the channel the flows uh, i'll make available on the downloads page of the website and I'll put a link to the, the written tutorial which, which uh, accompanies this on the website and you can find other links to other related tutorials as well. So until next time, goodbye.